Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another horse heresy vehicle video. It is a horse heresy vehicle, but it's actually not going into a horse heresy army. All of the horse heresy tanks can pretty much be played in 40k, and I've decided to add this one into my 40k Death Guard army, and it is a Typhon heavy siege tank. I feel like it embodies Death Guard to the nth degree. Now, how I'm going to tackle this is actually by recreating the rust video that I did last week where I used the dirty down rust on a piece of wall section. You guys seem to really enjoy that video. I got a bunch of comments and tips and tricks, things that maybe could help me out a little bit more. And I decided to put my money where my mouth was instead of just using a little piece of wall that is insubstantial or isn't really very important. If I ruined it, uh, I'm gonna go uh, all in on this crazy big tank and see what I can do. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. So a huge thank you to you guys. If you're on the fence and thinking about joining, some of the benefits you do receive is access to a private Discord server. And you get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys. Okay, without further ado, let's get this tank done. Okay, this is the Typhon Heavy Siege Tank. I have built it straight out of the box. I did print off some cheeky Death Guard doors to uh, stick onto it. Um, I would tag the designer in the links below, but they're actually not that fantastic and they didn't fit quite right. So I had to do some um, kind of cutting and shaping to make them fit, which is kind of frustrating. So uh, I'm not gonna share that with you guys. Um, as you can see, I've got certain parts of it kept off. The sponsons and the big dozer blade gun shield thing um, for the front and I've got big plans for the gun shield. Okay, so Chaos Black is what I sprayed the entire model and then I gave it quite a heavy dusting of Death Guard Green because I wanted to start from that green armor color. As you can see, it gives you a really nice starting tone. If you don't have that, don't worry, Chaos Black and just hand paint the Death Guard Green on. It won't make too much of a difference, um, especially on a scheme like this where we're gonna be weathering the hell out of it. Um, there won't be any brush marks or anything like that that you will notice um, towards the end of the project. But as you can see, these sprays really do give you a really nice clean start. And this is an aesthetic that I actually enjoy more than the dirty side of things. But I'm going to challenge myself to try and do a really, really wrecked, ruined, rusty, battered old tank, which is what the Death Guard are all about. So the first thing I'm going to do is go for lead belcher paint and paint in all the metallic parts of this tank. Majority of those being the huge track sections that run on both sides, obviously. They also be driving in circles. Uh, I use a uh, large kind of flat dry brush piece um, for this. It's got a really great point as well. Um, and I got pretty good hand control. So I managed to uh, paint the entire tracks with this large brush. It only takes a couple of minutes. If you're using a smaller brush, it may take quite a bit longer, but needs must. So as you can see, these are all the bits that I blocked in with the silver. After that, we're gonna jump over to Balthazar Gold. What Death Guard thing would not be uh, complete without adding in some brass? So I went for those 3D printed symbols that I put on the side. Obviously the Legion symbol and the uh, Death Guard symbol applied to each side. And then after these two parts were done, it was kind of up to you as to what else you wanted to do. Uh, bronze, you could definitely have chosen more or less depending on your style or your aesthetic or how much you like the color. Um, but I basically just went around and tried to be a little bit more symmetrical. I tried to find parts that would make sense and, and get them done in the brass color. So a lot of the cannon was done, the ringlet on the sponsons and some panels on the top I added in uh, as well. This is just to help it stand out a little bit more. From here, we're gonna move over to Abaddon Black and we're gonna paint in those inner tank bits. I never know what to call these, but I usually when I paint any Space Marine tanks, I like to do these in a different color just to help break up the, the quantity of the same color that there usually is on a Space Marine tank. And I find these natural recesses are just a fantastic place to put a secondary color. With Death Guard, there aren't really secondary colors. Um, so I just hit it with a black, which will do the same job. It'll help break up all of that green. Obviously, I did some of the gun casing on the giant siege cannon on the front as well in black. And that's basically all the base coats that I'm going to apply to this tank. I'm not going to apply anything else to this apart from the rust and a dry brush, which seems kind of insane. But the gun shield, what am I going to do with that? Chevrons. Chevrons are innately chaos. I think they look really cool. They really add something to a scheme. I know they're traditionally iron warriors, but I have a habit of sticking them on lots of other things. 
and I'm going to follow that through with this here. So as you can see, I basically mask up the entire piece and then I take off every second piece so I get completely perfectly distanced lines, which is super important for chevrons. If you just try and guess and then you paint them and then you peel it off and they're all just a little bit different, your brain will scream at you at how wrong it is. It just will not look good. So I prefer to spend that little bit of extra time, get the spacing right on the masking tape, and then I use white ink and yellow ink, Indian ink, um, to, uh, through an airbrush to get a smooth coat of yellow on this. I have shown in a previous video that you can mask off and just paint. So if that's your uh, vocation, you do not have a um, airbrush, that's totally fine. Just mask off the same and then just paint on. I did it on my how to paint white guide um, on the front of a white jet bike for Eldar. As you can see, nice, neat, evenly spaced lines. Okay, now was for the scary part. So I went over to the rust and I decided to go with one of the things which somebody suggested, which was to put it through an airbrush. That's why I decided to airbrush the chevrons on the front is because I have my airbrush set up to try this crazy technique. And what can I say about using the dirty down rust through an airbrush? There's not much to say except don't. It is awful stuff. I mean, I get a nice consistent coat, but I seriously had to stop every minute and take apart the front and clean it out. This stuff dries so fast and it's a bit stringy and it's a bit clumpy. It literally crogged four or five times during the painting process. It was extremely frustrating to get through it all. It left a nice result, but even then, I'm not sure whether the coat that it gave it was as was too thin for the result that I wanted to get. If you watched my video last week and the, the result that I got on that wall was obviously due to hand painting and then removing, which I think gave me a better result than what I achieved with this tank. So if I go back to using the Dirty Down Rust myself again, I will 100% be using it with a brush, even though it's going to use quite a lot more. It's going to be a little bit more wasteful. I know people had comments about that, the way that I apply it and then wipe a lot of it off. They think that that's insane because obviously it's a slightly more expensive product than say a shade or a wash. But for the results, I think it's worth it. But I guess that's each to their own. Once the rust had applied, all I use is a slightly stiffer brush soaked in water, wipe off a little bit of the water and then try and get even motions going down. I want the, the grime to look like it's washing down on the model. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this model has so many different areas, like a different platform, different heights across uh, even the side flat panel of the hull, it didn't quite give me the result that I was looking for. That's not to say the result was bad. It's just not what was in my head. I was hoping for more of the result that I got on the gun shield, which you will see me get in a moment. I wasn't expecting the smooth green, like glowing paint to just explode through on this. I wanted it to look a little bit more kind of grimy, a little bit more wear and tear. And that's once again down to experience. The more you use this, the more you'll learn about pressures and like what kind of thickness of coat will do what result when you try and remove it. Like I think I would have gotten a completely different result if I had hand painted the rust paint on the side of this tank and then tried to wipe it off like this. But I would have used 10 times more of the rust. Well, not 10 times, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. But as you can see, it's definitely giving me that Death Guard feel of a tank that grimy. Like whenever they read about a Death Guard ship or read again a Death Guard tank on the battlefield or armor, it is disgusting. It smells, it's rusty, it's corroded and decrepit. So I definitely think it gave you a result that pulls off that technique. I just feel like I got some brush strokes and stuff in the rust, which look a little bit unnatural, which are just throwing off my eyes just a little bit. But I powered on through. I knew I was going to be dry brushing the entire hole with some lead belcher paint in a moment. Same thing I did with the, the wall section I did in the video. And that is a really nice uh, bit to kind of put the cherry on top of a paint scheme like this. It catches all those sharp edges as if they've been scuffed or scraped. And it made all the difference. So nice flat panel like this. Exactly the same thing. But as you can see, I'm controlling that downward motion a lot better with this. And it's giving me that result that I really wanted to achieve on the hull of the tank that I just didn't quite get there. If I did this tank all over again, I think I probably would have done a better result. And that harkens back to the idea of maybe practicing with this uh, tool before you go off and use it on an expensive piece. 
is probably the best thing to do. And having said that, like I said, it does wipe off with water. So there's nothing to say I cannot wash off all of that rust if I really wanted to. I don't think it would take that much effort. And then try again. The only thing really stopping me with that is time. <laughs> but as you can see, I kept most of the footage of this in because I think the result is actually stunning. Same downward motion as if, I don't know, years of horrid rain has washed away some of the grime and the rust. How many battlefields does this tank trundle over? How many times it fired in anger? Using a little bit of a hairbrush or hairbrush, a hair dryer now to dry off the uh, water and the rust, which actually sets the rust again. Makes a little bit of that orange kind of uh, pop out. It has a really weird, I don't know what the word is when something reacts to heat. I know there's a word to it, but. And this is the gun shield as it was finished. And I think this looks absolutely staggering, like absolutely beautiful um, for the amount of effort put in. As you can see, the side of the tank right now is looking a little bit rough. Not really happy with that. So this is where the lead belcher will come in and hopefully save the day. As you can see, what I'm doing is large flat dry brush again. And I'm just going to dry brush basically the entire tank, catching all of those sharp edges, details, and bits like that. Which will draw the attention away, hopefully, from some of those crazy streaks that I got. I think it did a pretty good job of that, to be honest. I can obviously go back and add things like weathering powder and stuff, which will also draw your attention away and will suit the design and aesthetic of this tank. Here is the entire hull dry brush with silver now, the entire tank, giving you that horrid, corroded Death Guard look. I think if I had a whole army and a whole bunch of tanks painted like this, it would look pretty cool. The gun shield, I think, really did save the day. It turned out so well, it's going to draw the attention of the eye a lot. Also the fluorescent -y crazy lights that I have over my paint desk, which I really do need to change sometime soon and um, uh, put it in a much harsher light than it belongs. I'm going to show you guys a few high um, profile shots in a moment. Should give you a better idea of what this thing will look like on a gaming table as opposed to under this kind of bright daylight bulb thing. Here he is next to a Death Guard Marine. And as you can see, when he's placed in the scene, I think he looks pretty spectacular and considering I used four paints on the hull and two paints on the gun shield to give you a total of six paints plus a rust is all I used to paint this entire tank. I think it's a pretty good job. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little venture down into the depths of rust again. Let me know once again what you think of this in the comments below. I'd be very curious to know if you like it or if you absolutely hate it. I can take it. I'm a big boy. Okay guys, and there we have it. One Typhon Heavy Siege Tank ready to roll out alongside my 40k Death Guard. What have I learned from this experience is once again that the Dirty Down range, although absolutely incredible, it's an amazing tool. It is not an easy tool to use. There's definitely parts of the tank where my mind is blown for how it turned out, especially the dozer blade style with all the chevrons. And that piece is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever created. Sides of the tank, some of the streaks aren't really where I wanted them to, or I really wasn't hoping for that much green to show back through, and I was like adding more and taking more away and back and forth and back and forth. So I think it is definitely one of those tools that it is just the more you use it, the more comfortable you get, the more you learn, and the better results you'll be able to get. So if this is a product you're interested in picking up, just be aware that you should practice with it a good bit before you decide to apply it to anything that you really care about. I got sent this pot free of charge from Air Hobbies, a local independent hobby store here. So a huge thank you to them. And if you're interested in picking it up and are in Ireland, I suggest grabbing it from them. They do next day delivery country wide. Links will be below. All right, guys, thank you so much for the uh, enjoying the video. Uh, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you have in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And take two seconds every day, hit that subscribe button and make me smile. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.